Okay, eye tracking. Eye tracking, you remember these lovely diagrams where people are looking, bouncing a laser off people's eyes? Eye tracking um, records eye movement. So what you do is you sit somewhere in front of your computer screen, your site, you ask them to perform a task on your site, and you don't ask them to talk because talking they'll tend to look at you and their eyes will go everywhere. You just ask them to do their thing and you will track where their eyes are looking. If, you're kind, if you think about usability testing where you're, where you're observing someone, you see where the cursor goes, because normally where the cursor is is kind of where they're looking subconsciously, and you imagine they're talking aloud anyway. Personally, I don't think this gives a whole lot more value than think aloud usability testing. It gives you a nice diagram, but in terms of usable information, the think aloud, because you're getting someone to think aloud at the same time, you're you're, an a you're able to ask them questions, probably gives you, I would suggest, a better qualitative idea of what's going on. So I'm not a big fan of eye tracking. A lot of people like it because it gives you pretty diagrams that feel scientific. And also, um, agencies quite like it because once you buy this equipment, it's very expensive equipment, you need to sell the service in order to get anything out of it. So, you know, just think carefully about whether or not it's actually giving you anything more than regular usability testing. Um, you can, of course, after the session, once you, if someone did have a problem, ask them what they were thinking at that point, but it's never as good because you know, it flies out of their head straight away. So these are the pros and cons, which I just said. The pro, heat maps, pretty. The con, heat maps, people tend to give them too much credence. They try and read too much into it very often. Paper prototyping. Um, I hope this ends soon. I haven't got a great deal of time left. Paper prototyping. This is where, um, instead of having a proper website to test, you just design the website on paper and you show them a paper design and you say this is our home page what do you think where would you click if you wanted to do this and then when they say oh I'll click here you just give them a pen and they go oh I'll click here they say oh, okay well this is the drop down that opens it's just very very hand drawn this is the drop down that opens what would you do next I'd choose that one oh okay and then you give them a new, 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 new page that you've previously drawn previously on 24 previously drawn you go, this is what you get what do you do next so it allows you to try and get feedback on your design very, very early on before you've bothered actually building it. The advantage of this is that if you think about the number of times you've designed sites, there's almost always arguments about, you know, really high level arguments about how are we going to design the site, what are the top level sections going to be, what's the design philosophy going to be, those sorts of arguments. They're good for paper prototyping because you can get feedback on those questions really early on rather than just picking one that the boss likes and then building it up into a proper prototype which takes time and money because it takes documentation, it takes programming effort and then testing it because at that point you can't change the fundamental assumptions really anymore. All you can do is tweak and make the best of what you got. So this is why paper prototype is quite good. Quick iterative design at the beginning of the design process and this is what we just talked about where you just put it in front of them, get them to point and click and then you just slide the next, sh the next sheet under it. Web Analytics. Uh, web Analytics is supposed to be, you know, manna from heaven. It's supposed to be gold. It's supposed to be real life data on what people are actually doing on your site when they're sat at home with their digestive biscuit, with their toddler crawling between their legs, which is like as in situ high fidelity as you can get. So in theory, if you've got really good web data, you really don't need to use the rest of this stuff. You can just understand entirely how people are using your site. Unfortunately, I haven't got an unfortunately slide. Unfortunately, anyone who's used web data knows it can be an absolute pig to get a site tagged properly, reporting accurately, and have confidence in the data. So very often, web analytics is not the solution to all your problems. It might help identify problems, such as you know, page one of the brochure request process, you've got 100 people. Thank you, page, you've got two people. We've got a problem here. But then you probably have to go away and find what the problem is, either by tweaking the design and on your real live website, A-B testing it, which can be great if you trust the data. If you don't trust the data at all, which is sad and unlikely, but if you didn't trust it at all, then you'd have to do usability testing, paper prototyping, something like that. But A-B testing is a very good way of trying to find out what's going on. 